This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map Snowplow. I'm just scrolling in from a different angle so that we can all pretend that there are uh, new maps that people play, but we're back here on Snowplow 4, a classic Soviet versus allies in the north, plain blue. This is Toolman. And in the south, playing as the orange, the allied player, airfield first. This is 12-12. These are two Chinese players, and so these are folks that uh, many people on the channel will be a little bit less familiar with. Although I have casted games both from Toolman and from 12-12. I'm pretty sure Toolman played a pretty epic 1v1 against Happy on Infinity Isle that was pretty phenomenal. And, ooh, are we, do, we have a, do, we, do we have a battle bunker? Is there going to be a battle bunker? No, it might just be the flak cannon there. And apparently this is Toolman's opening, is a bunch of flak troopers. One reactor does get knocked down there, but he does get a little bit of cash back. He doesn't manage to catch any of the Vindicators on exit. But for now, the MCV from the Allied player will take the middle of the map. This may be a quick and dirty game with 12-12 coming in with a very aggressive MCV position. Although... Black Troopers may be able to break this. No, the walls are coming in. The delay tactics are starting. 12-12 is hoping that he can keep his hope alive and keep this strong MCV position. He will have three refineries very solidly, but expanding away from here may come at a detriment. And a couple of Flak Troopers have actually closed in. These Vindicators are going to pay a little bit of a price. No, they won't. The Flak Troopers in the building were targeting down the wall segments and didn't get any shots on the Vindicators. So this game starting off quickly with Flak Troopers and Vindicators tearing each other down. The MCV still taking a bit of damage here. One of those Flak Troopers can still hit that MCV. The others seem to be taking down the walls and the Vindicators will be able to break the building but not with this first bombing run. That MCV has taken a significant portion of damage. It is going to have to move back sooner or later. I can't believe that 1212 is going to be keeping this MCV for the, there for very much longer. Peacekeepers may be on the way. For now, it's just four Vindicators here from 1212. Toolman has abandoned his front line. He doesn't want to lose all of his flak troopers in one fell swoop. Crusher Crane is coming up. Third refinery is potentially... No, it is already online. So Toolman got a pretty quick third refinery. He is the only player with an oil derrick as well. So that is a nice little touch there from Toolman. Peacekeeper is going to be able to clear out that building. And the Vindicators are actually going to cut off to the left side of the map. They might be looking to just avoid those flak troopers, but they are going to see the MCV. They are going to get the intel on this high ground expansion. And they will also see the super reactor timing coming in from Toolman. Vindicators circling around the middle of the map looking for that MCV. And for now, it's going to be a naval yard as the follow up. No tier two yet. From 1212. Vindicators 1 will pay the price, but that is a lot of flak troopers going down. Maybe 6 or 8 flak troopers in total traded out for 1 Vindicator. And certainly 3 flak troopers went down. We may not have seen the exact numbers, but it was enough to pay for 1 Vindicator. MCV on the front line. And this is where the Soviet player starts to potentially outstrip the economy of the Allied player. Gets the cash back on both oil derricks as well. So it'll take the oil derrick of 1212 a little while to actually pay for itself. No bullfrogs, no flak troopers on the front line. But once, no uh, flak cannons rather, on the front line. But once again, the flak troopers going to be trading out with that Vindicator. Tesla Coil is actually going to start... Uh, there's no there's no multi-gunner turret started. So this could actually be really dangerous. Flak Trooper and Tesla Coil both going to be coming in. And this might be just a bait to force the Vindicators to drop their bombs or to choose where to drop their bombs. If they don't go for the Flak Troopers, if they try and go for the Tesla Coil, then the Flak Troopers will get lots of shots off. One Vindicator goes down. And no, he does let the Tesla Coil finish up. So this MCV is going to be running for the hills. And this position has been completely broken. 12-12 actually gives it all up. 
He backs completely out of the middle of the map, and this has kind of distracted him from either killing off or or taking over that oil derrick on the right side of the map. Tool Man getting a pretty good opening out of this airfield first allied player. I mean, 12-12 went to the middle of the map immediately. 12-12 looking to take this oil derrick on the right side as well. And 12-12 is going to have to come up with a slightly different plan to follow this up with. He does take the third refinery on the high ground. His MCV beaten, but not dead. And it feels like uh, maybe a war factory is the way to go. Or at the very least, go tier 2 and get cryocopters. No, it's still not tier 2. It is going to be a war factory, though. Still no cryocopters, no tier 2, nothing like that so far for 12-12. He's wanting to play this one out so far with just one airfield worth of Vindicators. And now that the super reactor has been out for a little while, the third refinery has been working, and the fourth refinery is online, Toolman is going to be looking towards that airfield as his next step. Twin Blades already out on the field. One MIG as well. The Riptide gets torn down. 12-12. He's coming up empty in a couple of these ways. He's going to be able to get the Tesla Coil. That's a good snipe by 12-12. He wants to make sure that he identifies those frontline areas that he can poke and prod. For now, Bears will take a little bit of damage from the Peacekeeper IFV. Tesla Coil getting re-established. And Toolman has done a really good job of handling the middle of the map. Finally, we get Tier 2 up and running. 12-12 has not had the tools to deal with this Soviet player. He was starting out strong, but... It, I mean, he wasn't able to completely clear out that building the way he wanted. 12-12 has just been getting pushed around, even though he had a solid opening. Harvester gets sniped. A little bit of cash back there for Toolman as well. Very active with the cash bounty support power in this game. Toxin's going to be able to clear out that building. Gets himself a couple of Peacekeepers basically for free. And there's the expansion for 12-12 out on the water. So he did take the Oil Derricks. He wasn't able to secure both of them for very long. But he does get the expansion out on the water as well. So 12-12 keeping himself alive. Keeping his hopes alive. And, you know, even as he has to rebuild a couple of Harvesters here or there, the damage isn't too bad when you can have four refineries and an Oil Derrick. Apollo actually going to get a kill on the Twin Blades. Both of the Twin Blades going down in that moment. And the Apollo able to escape. And it's going to be a quick Tier 3 from 12-12. You wonder why does he not have a ground army? He may have committed too much into the tech. Fortunately, it was a very late war factory for Toolman. So that means 12-12 is going to have an opportunity to come back. Athena Cannon is out the first tool that he needs to in his pouch to defeat Toolman. Hammer Tank gets targeted down, and he just sits there. Toolman lets the Hammer Tank eat the entire shot without running away. And that means this Athena Cannon can start cleaning up more units. Every shot becomes more and more valuable. Three more Hammer Tanks going to be returning to base. A couple of Indicators going down. Feels like both players have had a little bit of a wonky start but have now stabilized enough that they know where they should be going for the rest of this game. Actually, it's going to be a two-super reactor game. Not often do we get to see a two-super reactor game. Battle Lab and Super Reactor both coming in at the same time. Toolman is like, I got a little bit of cash in the bank. No, I don't. I spent it all. Well, Super Reactor and Tier 3 at the same time will do that to you. Twin Blade Snipe on the right side of the map. Going to be taking down that Oil Derrick. And 12-12 has bought just enough time. He is playing for whatever reason. He is choosing to play a cryocopterless style. Uh, he actually he sold off his airfield. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he rebuilds it somewhere else uh, in, a, in a minute or two. But for whatever reason, he has chosen to sell off that airfield. And he has chosen to play an airfieldless style. Which... You know, as much as people, or cryocopterless style, as much as people hate cryocopters, they are, with the way the game currently is designed, they are a critical part of almost any allied player's arsenal. 
All right, Airfield is back online. It is no longer quite on the front line. Migs going down. At least one gets traded out. Uh, Twinblade as well will go down. Gets both of the Harvesters, though, and the Mig will get, or the Apollo will get the kill on that Twin Blade. Meanwhile, on the front line, Aegis Shield did get popped. Anti-Air is a little bit weak on the front lines, but it's just strong enough to scare away a couple more of these Twin Blades. Tualan may have actually been able to, if he committed into that attack a little bit more, he may have actually been able to find some more damage. But 12-12, uh, kind of getting away with just a couple of uh, Javins, uh, Javelin Troopers in the building as Anti-Air. I do love the taking of this structure in the south. Toolman has nice vision on his opponent because of that. One oil derrick and four refineries for Toolman. And then it's just four refineries for 1212. He has yet to uh, deny or claim the left side oil derrick back from Toolman. Both players happy to play this one out with ground armies growing. Not a lot of, you know, I'm going to just base push you with turrets and hope that that wins me the game and throw the game into chaos. It's like, all right, no, we're going to play this one out. We're going to go big War Factory style. And this Terror Drone is actually going to get the kill on this Harvester. Nicely done by Toolman, able to get that deny on that fourth refinery out there at the water. V4s not making a big appearance in this game, but we do have this Kirov here and maybe another Kirov on the way for Toolman. Both of these guys, macro, staying on top of it. it the macro has been very solid from both of them. 12-12, it took him a little while to get his front line situated, but, you know, he's kind of figured it out. And no, it's not going to be a quick game. It's going to be even more drawn out. It's going to be even longer played out because Iron Curtain out on the map. Black Cannon comes up. This is just to absorb a couple of shots, I have to imagine. One Kirov gets committed into the attack, but the second one isn't far behind. And Toolman is looking to sew this one up. He's committing big with these Kirovs through the middle of the map. And it is going to be the Hammer Tanks targeting down the Athena Cannons with their Leech Beams, giving one of them heroic access to that Athena Cannon return fire. And the Kirovs going to be rushing forward. These IFVs, not a part of the fight, but the Cryo Freeze from the sky guy will save 1212 perhaps his entire army getting the benefit of those rank ups and pushing the front line further forward a mirage tank goes down as the kirov crashes down into the ground and how stealing away a couple of high tech allied buildings uh, abilities these hammer tanks almost getting huge value for toolman but just critically missing the mark it's a bit of a trade. It's a bit of a wash between these two players. Toolman versus 12-12. Snowplow continues to be the battleground where this fight in the middle is raging. Well, Toxin Drop was maybe a little late, but that will, you know, put a pause on any allied aggression. What a terror drone does, I can do better, says the Akula. Uh, but then he just stops and waits for a minute as he is hoping to get the kill on that refinery, on the harvester, on basically everything over here. And I think he should be able to. The Kirovs going through the middle, the freeze coming down. Oh, that was like perfectly timed there. Toolman gets the kill on the harvester with the ultra torpedoes and does big splash to that refinery. Forces the sell off and well, we are back down to four refineries. As, four, as soon as 12-12 seems to get five refineries up, one of them gets knocked down. Or as soon as he's in that position to take five refineries, one of them gets knocked down. This game is giving me serious deja vu with, I think it was Harlan versus 12-12 on this same map. I think Harlan went Kirov's in the middle as well. And now this is like, wait, is, is, oh no, he crushes his MCV. 
All right, well, Tuman just got a nice 3.7k boost to his economy. He's already at four refineries and an oil derrick, but he wanted an extra bit of cash as well. Anyways, Kirov's through the middle of the map. It feels like, wait, is this like a Chinese player thing where instead of going for, you know, Apox or V4s or whatever, they go for Kirov's over top of your army and then just hope that they can batter you down with those bombs dropping from above? I don't know, but it feels like now we've seen it a couple of times. The Dreadnought gets shrunken down by that cryocopter. The refinery is maybe still unprotected. Like, if he gets a couple of more rockets off, that might be the end of this refinery. But no, the Kirov, uh, the Dreadnought can apparently not hit that refinery. Uh, it feels like he should be able to. One more rocket. He gets it. The refinery will go down. No, it won't. No. I thought that last ref rocket would be it, but no, the refinery stands tall once again. This hammer tank doing so much to keep the front line moving forward. Kirovs have been pulled off to the side, all three of them waiting on standby waiting for the opportune moment to come in. Two, three Apollos are here for 12-12. Iron Curtain is ready for Tool Man. And this Dreadnought actually survived. Oh, that Dreadnought, the, the Cryocopter got called off. Maybe the Vindicators are going to move in to take it down. Yes, they are. Okay, it's two Cryocopters now. And the last couple of rockets may get out. He didn't have a reload. No, the Vindicator drops bombs too early once again. The Chronosphere being added on 12-12 has actually kind of messed this up pretty bad. Athena Ken is now going to be fighting it out 1v1 against the Athenas. Uh, against the V4s, excuse me. As the V4s don't get much damage done, Kirovs will break open the front line. You may kill my Dreadnought, but... You're not going to secure your front line. It's going to be the Cryogeddon to save the day, but it's going to be the Iron Curtain to counteract that. That's five hammer tanks and terror drones all rushing forward. And walls won't stop us now. You can't keep us out as Toolman bursts forward into 12-12's base. Athena Cannon's getting targeted down, but the MCB is going to be the thing to kill. It's going to have to run out to the water. The hammer tank's trying to close in. The terror drone gets the infect, and the kill will be confirmed out on the water and the hammer tanks exit just leave the map as the Kirovs commit into the attack go for the tier three go for the shutdown it's a full tech reset of the allied player 12 12 has fought it out and he's gonna get a bunch of kills on exit the hammer tanks getting funneled down to almost nothing as this mcb holds on to hope with dear life hoping to survive the next moment or two to get into repair range of something as the front line completely falls apart for both players, their armies annihilating each other one by one. The Mirage and the IFVs will win the day. The MCV survives! 12-12's MCV survived! Natasha comes out onto the front line. But it'll be the Cryocopters that freeze her solid. Are you kidding me? 12-12 pulled that around. That massive army pullback from 1212, choosing to disengage with the hammer tanks, turned out to be the game winning move or to be the winning move there. That entire battle could have ended the game for Toolman. And instead, 1212 actually kind of pulls out a win, gets a couple of twin blades as they try and escape after killing that. Harvester. The tech was saved. Unmitigated disaster would have been upon 1212. But uh, now he's got a chronosphere and his tech got saved. He killed the dreadnought, which means the refinery on the right also got saved. And now he has the free trade upgrade. So he's getting that bonus cash as well. Triple cryocopter. The MiGs have long been cleaned up, and I don't know that they ever got rebuilt. It looks like it's empty. Chronosphere is here. Tier 3 will not be frozen. Harvester will escape for now. 
IFEs on the low ground are going to take down that oil derrick long. Has that oil derrick been unopposed by 1212? And he's finally going to knock it down. No more free money for you, but another Dreadnought is going to try and get the kill. Oh, the Chronosphere could actually just end this Dreadnought completely. Just take it down in one moment. Like, as soon as those, as those missiles lock in, as soon as they land, 1212 is going to be clicking over there, and he's going to have a Chronosphere ready to go, and that would make sense. IFE's getting infected. They uh, may actually lose the opportunity. They might not be here. Fight. Get out of the way! Athena Cannon, get out of the way! No, that Athena Cannon may have just killed one of the... No, the terror... No, 1212 kills... No, 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 no! The repair comes in. I, I can't believe he pulled that out, but he did. Somehow he pulled that out. Chronosphere is here. It won't save the refinery. The Dreadnought gets the kill. The best you can hope for is just killing the Dreadnought after the fact. You know, you get to keep your build radius because the Dreadnought won't kill that off. But the Cryocopters come in. Iron Curtain is ready as well. If you wanted to use that on the Dreadnought, it would save it. But of course, it wouldn't save it for long. Twin Blades coming in. They're going for another Harvester kill. Toolman has been pretty relentless with this harassment. He's going to get a backstab airfield kill as well, right as they drop down onto the deck. No, the Apollos will save it. The airfield goes down. The Vindicator escapes, but both of the Twin Blades get shot up and shot down. This MCV has seen it all. And this Chronosphere still biding its time iron curtain as well 12 12 versus tool man going so late into the game again love the uh love the infantry taking the building just like what's happened down here in the south but now they're both getting cleared out by aircraft at the same time toxins getting called in this one refinery has been harassed so much in comparison to everything else in the game it is, you know, several loads of ore behind its equal. It's nearby ore mine. They just, uh, they haven't been able to, to be consistent. Constantly getting shut down by twin blades, toxins, orbital drop. Those Kirovs were extremely expensive for Toolman to try and pull out. And I mean, maybe he can do something similar, but... Bases are starting to expire. Ore is being depleted. Three mines have been depleted. The others don't have a ton of life left to give. Never mind, this one still has 18 grand. But the other three have been depleted, which means that army that Toolman first built, he no longer has the active income to support an army like that. Again, one cryocopter gets broken down. Apollo's. Getting tagged a little bit here. Athena Cannon's going for the refinery. They skip the bullfrogs. They go for the big prize. And they knock it down. Dolphin and a couple of hydrofoils. No single Tesla coil would be able to stop this force. Chronosphere and Iron Curtain both ready to go. And, well, this Dolphin is going to be going for the splash, but it is going to take a little while to knock down that Harvester with that adaptive armor. Terror Drone will get the infect, and that Harvester will be killed off. No. Oh, actually, the refinery got misplaced on rebuild as well. So that's one of those annoying things for 1212. He's going to be, you know, 5, 10, 15% less effective with that refinery. It is only got four grand left in it, and the free trade upgrade does help make up for it. Although, at this point, if 1212 has free trade, Toolman probably has uh, mass production. And mass production means that you can actually churn a profit with a crusher crane if you have the Terror Drone Surprise upgrade. Because mass production lowers the production cost of your units to basically the same value that you get back from them from the crusher crane. So a hammer tank, you know, costs 1000 but when you crush it, well, actually, with mass production, it costs whatever, 800 or something, or uh, maybe 650 And then that's what you get back from the Crusher Crane, but then it also has a chance of spawning a Terror Drone. And that Terror Drone, you get cash back on, but it didn't cost you anything. It's Christmas time once again, apparently. 
as these lovely trees are on display. No, no. Nothing suspicious here. These trees have health bars. But don't you worry your pretty little head about that. Toolman is not looking to generate some crusher crane meat grinder machine. He's instead going to be looking to fight this one out in the next battle. He's looking to rebuild that refinery. Give those Athena cannons some fresh target practice. They haven't actually ranked up yet. Well, terror drones do survive, but the hammer tanks do not. That was basically the entire ground army of Toolman, and it just got emptied of its life. It just got a free swimming class, courtesy of the Allied Army. We know you guys can't afford swimming classes, so we decided to pay for them. Apollo's going to be able to get the target down on one twin blade, but not the others. They will escape, and the Athena Cannon's going to burn down that refinery. Just cancel it now. It does get canceled. Denies the Athena Cannons from any additional rank ups. And I'm not actually sure what Toolman is waiting for. He might be that scared of the twin blades because the bullfrogs can keep the Apollos away when they are close to each other. But the Athena cannons can obviously just start poking and prodding away at this base. Like, they can take down that reactor, try and push down this war factory. The Terror Drones could be trouble, but between Mirage Tanks and Peacekeepers, I think the Terror Drones can be dealt with. Naval Yard is getting shut down by this Akula sub. 12-12 has been a little bit weak on the naval front, and we see that exploited here. Uh, Twinblade going to come in, kind of poke and prod. The cryocopters are trying to keep the Akula sub away, but at the same time, the Twin Blade shows up and says, well, if you didn't bring your Apollos to play, I can get a couple of free shots. And then as soon as the Apollos show up, the Bullfrogs are here as well. Two Apollos get lit up and taken down. 12-12 knocks down the refiner. The cryoblast comes out, freezes the harvester, freezes the refinery, and the Iron Curtain is still ready to go. Low power mode for the allied player means that that chronosphere isn't going to be helping out anytime soon. Hydrofoil and and Dolphin have managed to escape for now. Terror drones going for the infect. They might be able to get uh, one of the hydrofoils. We'll see. It might be kind of weird with the dolphin here. That dolphin is heroic can, you know, potentially cause some problems. This is going to be kind of a tricky engagement. The Twin Blades, nice control there. One Twin Blade takes the damage, peels off. Great unit micro from Toolman, and actually he narrowly escapes with everything that was perfectly done there by Toolman. Literally one of those Twin Blades with one second more of fire from that Hydrofoil would have exploded. And maybe you could chalk that up to 12-12 not actively controlling him. Well, never mind. His Apollos will blast through these units. Who cares what the Hydrofoils did because the Apollos find the kill. Oh, Apollos stuttering for just a moment there, but they don't get caught by the Bullfrogs. The Bullfrogs maybe could have chased them into the corner, but, you know, that's one of those things that is easy to say as an observer and not necessarily something that you think about when you're playing. Like, oh, what if he flies over my base? Can I maybe, uh... Can I maybe chase him into the corner? And it's like, well, not normally, but in this case, yeah. Toolman has been confined into this teeny tiny square of the map, and we see the depleted ore mines taking effect as what was a fast and furious action-packed first 10 or 20 minutes has slowed down as their income has flattened out. Once you hit that depletion curve, uh, Twin Blade does not go down. Heroic IFV blasts away at that Twin Blade. I think that's still the two Heroic IFVs that the Athena Cannon almost killed with their body blocking. Uh, anyways, as the income flattens out for both players, every unit becomes so, so important, but also every army takes so much longer to rebuild. Every ore mine that isn't depleted becomes of utmost importance. 17 grand left for the taking in the middle of the map. And now, the weirdo stuff that normally only the weirdo players try 
now becomes commonplace as it's like, oh, let's shrink down a Riptide. Go along the left side of the map. Try something around the edges of the map. Try and retake this expansion out on the water that still has 20 grand in it. And, well, this Riptide is going to kind of give itself away. I hope it's Javelin Troopers. Yes, it is. No, it's Peacekeepers and only one jab inside of it. Twin Blades can make short work of the jab, but it may not be fast enough. But it will be Terror Drones that get the kill. And now the Peacekeepers do have enough DPS. Barely they do. They get the kill on the Tier 3. They deny that tech, but the Riptide will go down. And the money shots from this Vindicator. So much value. That one Vindicator just got a huge boon for 12-12. Crusher Crane goes down. MCV is going to have to be restarted. No, it already was. It was rebuilt out here at the Naval Yard. But no more repairs. Chronosphere is back online. Precision Bomber comes in. Terror Drone gets frozen, but that's a consolation prize for 12 12. Vindicator comes over. Nice snipe, and the bridge will be removed from play. All right. Right side of the map has been cleared out. Airfield may have to be sold off here. This is going to be the late game satellite crash. So it'll do pretty good damage. Nah, it was in the middle. So it doesn't take out the airfield. Airfield might have survived anyways. But this build radius over here is going to be denied. Cryocopter's like, oh, all right, we'll fly over there. The Akula sub's like, uh, okay, I'm just going to go back underwater as soon as you show up. Oh, one last shot. It might be too much with two cryocopters. Yeah, it's too much. Barely. It's barely too much. Apparently, he should have waited. Toxins get called in. The infantry army gets completely shut down in this low power once again for 12 12. He gets the kill on the Akula sub, but he loses his entire infantry army. He actually loses an Athena cannon as well. That was apparently an amazing one click getting called in here those toxins just whoa doing so much damage this late in the game 12 12 okay no for a second i thought he had three heroic ifvs but no it was just repairs coming in on one of the ifvs twin blades always looking for an opening terror drones going to be rushing in walls coming in and the terror drones getting a lockdown on only one ifv the kirov down below half health as the apollos swoop in to finish it off well it was a good attempt by tool man but 12 12 isn't gonna fall for any of that easy nonsense power plant means that this chronosphere is back online and the units have to split 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 Two hammer tanks? I don't know. Four hammer tanks. Keep them away from each other. Don't let them become friends. Don't let them buddy up. Bullfrogs and terror drones are relatively safe. I mean, you can chronosphere them on top of buildings or onto the cliff or something, but it's harder to do than just grab a big group of hammer tanks and send them all into the water. Athena cannons. Two of them on the front line. Three Mirage tanks on the front line as well. Cryogeddon going to be firing off. Precision Bomber getting called in at just the right time. 12-12 not making the mistake. Toolman is not going to be letting this Iron Curtain go to waste. And it's going to be the Chronosphere. But he does manage to get a couple of them. One Hammer Tank does survive. And this Hammer Tank now has to fight the world. But it's going to be the Terror Drone's Iron Curtain to break down everything else. And the Terror Drone's going down inside of the first fire of your friends. And it will be the Terror Drones getting eliminated. The Hammer Tank gets one last kill with that Terror Drone surprise. The Mirage Tank, will it make it back to the repair zone in time? The War Factory had to get rebuilt for this. And no, the Terror Drone does get the kill. I cannot believe that that Terror Drone managed to get that last strike before the drones, the repair drones of the armor facility actually came in. Magnetic Singularity almost draws in the entire allied army, but doesn't quite land. 
Bullfrogs coming in to support Twin Blades as well. If the Bullfrogs could knock down the Apollos, then the Twin Blades might be able to deal with the IFVs. They managed to get down one IFV. Two IFVs are getting targeted, but no, the Apollos blast everything apart, and it's going to be 12-12 who still stands in the middle of the map. IFVs pushing forward. Mirage Tank as well. Toolman has crushed 12-12 time and time again, but never completely and toolman now pays the price one lone heroic mirage tank saving the day for 12 12 a double vent multi-gunner turret multi-gunner ifv as well it's gonna be the body block it's gonna be the time by from 12 toolman twin blades dodging in apollos were a little bit out of position and the mirage tank goes down Toolman finds a kill, and he's going to get the Apollo as well. The last Twin Blade. No, the second to last Twin Blade goes down. And I don't know if that was a flat cannon or something. It wasn't a, it wasn't a terror drum. It wasn't a Tesla coil, which is maybe what he actually needed. And now this multi-gunner IFV is going to pay the price. The cryocopters are going to try and come in to support. Oh, this IFV getting dangerously close to elimination. And the Terror Drone will get the kill. The Double Vet gets passed along. And the Terror Drone is happy to escape back home. 30 seconds on the Iron Curtain. 45 on the Chronosphere. And Toolman with his back against the wall with almost nothing left in the game brings out a win against two critical units of 12-12s. And he keeps himself in the game. The Athena Cannon out on the field, but there is so little to defend this Athena Cannon. Bridge getting replaced and rebuilt. I don't actually know who, who said, I want that right side of the map opened up. I guess it was Toolman, but we'll see what he's able to do with it. 12-12 may have actually spotted that. Cryogeddon is again going to fire off. He'll get the refinery. He'll get the harvester. The harvester can't escape because if the harvester escapes, then that means you get the cash back on the harvester and you're able to recoup half of the cost of that uh, refinery by sending the harvesters to the crusher crane so getting the harvester is actually an important part of that equation at least for 12 12 it is Toolman, we've seen him do this once again We've seen him do this time and time again on this map. We see him do it once more as he brings down those power plants, as he dodges and weaves with his twin blades, always coming in and out at the worst times for 12-12. And now the Terror Drone gets the infect on the harvester on the right side. The bridge got rebuilt. And that twin blade, that terror drone gets the kill. The twin blades dodge in as soon as the units get pulled over to the right side of the map. The twin blades come in and they kill an Athena cannon. But a twin blade pays the price. Every hit gets hit back. The, the airfield gets sold off or gets eliminated. And it is so low income for both of these players. They have spent their bank time and time and time again. They're running on fumes, and they have been, and they're both down to almost nothing. I don't know what it is with, like, crazy, scrappy games where it starts out big and bombastic. Uh, for a second, I thought the Terror Drone was going to survive. I was like, I don't think that's how that's supposed to work. But uh, big, bombastic fights, big armies, high tech, every unit you could ask for just about on both sides of the map. And then the money runs out, the cash disappears, and one by one, the units get traded against each other, and this battle marker in the south is just that Vindicator hoping to have a place to land and not finding a home. I keep thinking, but it's something else going on. Harvester is going to be rebuilt just in time for that Twin Blade to show up. No! He sees that it's empty, and he actually turns, and he's now going to go, I don't know, for a power plant or something. Goes for another Harvester. Scouts the base. Will fire off those rockets. Airfield finally back up and running. Apollos can finally be added back into the mix. 12-12 has been just trying to get out that airfield for so long. Been fighting low power mode. Been fighting no airfield. 
The Apollos have been absolutely critical to 12-12's defense for most of this game. And Toolman has been trying to limit those options. The Apollo is so expensive to get out when you've got such limited income. And Apollo isn't actually that expensive in, in the grand scheme of things. But when you've got so little income, it feels like it costs the world. These bullfrogs have been alive for so long. They've been around for so much of this game. Toolman has been doing a phenomenal job of preserving critical units like that. Think about those Akula subs who did so much, spent so long in this game. Toolman, similarly, so good to preserve his MCV, but the airfield has been the critical piece for him. Never stopping with the harassment, pretty much, wherever he finds an opportunity at the edges of Toolman's base. And Toolman doing the same, but with his twin blades. All right, Vindicator gets the kill. This Vindicator has seen a lot. The refinery was never rebuilt, which means the cryogetting could be used on something. Oh, hold that. Hold the dreadnought if that's a dreadnought. It might be an Akula, which actually would be a mistake, although Toolman doesn't know it. The Tier 3 was never rebuilt, it looks like. The MCV maybe was even crushed earlier on. Well, the second MCV maybe was crushed. Bullfrogs will be frozen. Where's the Vindicator coming in from the left? Nice bomb splitting. Gets the kill on both Bullfrogs. And now suddenly, Toolman is close to out of options. He did rebuild his MCV, so that's what it was. And now, he's got his support powers back in his control. Bye-bye to your power. Once again, offline... One power plant down, one power plant extremely low on health. Bullfrog commits to the left side of the map. It feels like Toolman should be able to clean this one up, but, well, he's actually going to pay the price. The Vindicator takes some heavy damage, and we'll have to be careful about his return home. Cryogeddon fires off. Those satellite drops have been good throughout this whole game, getting massive damage against the allied player. but not quite enough to win the game yet. This MCV has taken an absolute beating throughout the course of this game. Oh no, it's a conscript. It's not an engineer. It's a conscript there. Apollo's on Overwatch. No twin blades for them to shoot down. Cryocopters making a dangerous dance. All right, two of the bullfrogs are shrunken down. And the Apollos are going to get tagged a little bit here. One Apollo. Oh, nope. Every Apollo escapes, every cryocopter might escape, but these bullfrogs are so incredibly fast when they're shrunk down. They've got so much maneuverability, but it's going to be the IFVs and the Mirage tank breaking open the front door. Toolman is looking for the final engagement. He's looking for that final kill. And no, the Terror Drone doesn't get the infect. Barely, it does get denied as Toolman's hopes and dreams fall away. And 12-12 is looking to close this one out. The Crusher Crane will be next. The Magnetic Singularity is going to hope to draw in those units. It will save the Crusher Crane. It will keep Toolman in this game. The Magnetic Singularity cannot last forever, though. Mirage Tank and IFV Toxin Drop comes in. It doesn't quite get the catch on those units, but it does kind of trap them back here. The wall's now going to be coming in. The wall segment's not fast enough, not enough cash in the bank, and he will recycle almost every single unit that he's got rather than let it get given away. And that's a big cash boost coming in. Precision Bomber will land, and there's almost nothing left for Toolman, but he thinks he can still fight this one out. He's got the barracks getting rebuilt to body block for the War Factory, but there's so little left for Toolman. So little left, and not even the War Factory now. As his MCV is out on the water, his main base gets blasted to smithereens. Refinery and reactor gets sold off. The end of the road for Toolman. A hard-fought game. Uh, okay, he's got his iron... 
Uh, Mirage tank? It would be sick if he somehow took over that Mirage tank. I'm not sure if these guys are typing to each other in the chat. There we go. The GG gets called. Toolman has been defeated. A very long and drawn out 1v1 on Snowplow. And that will do it for an incredible back and forth that both players had. It felt like a dozen opportunities to win it and just weren't able to do it. Their opponent was always a little too strong. Income favoring tool man but that's pretty common for the uh soviet player to have more income than the allied player and that will do it for this game on snowplow thank you all very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and this is cyber signing out